Hi guys, dear friends and followers. Have you ever asked yourself what kind of maintenance you should do to your flashlight o-rings or to your camera housing o-rings? Well, let's take a look. First of it, I want to talk about the tools. We have, for example, here an um, o-ring remover from CNC. This is from an old camera, which is very handy because you have um, this stents here where you can try to pull the o-ring out. And these are not sharp. These are very rounded, so you can't actually damage the o-ring. The other thing, and this is more of a professional we use at the dive shop, this is um, actually a dentist tool, but this is great to remove the o-rings as, it it, as it is very small. The tip is very, very tiny, but you have to know what you're doing because you can really damage the o-ring with this. Okay? Then, the next thing is, and this is very simple, you have different options of, of grease. Here we have, for example, from Archon, from this light down there. Then we have some from Bryna. These are simple silicon greases which you can use on your O-rings. And here we have some from Maurice, for example. So here I have an example of a light which does not have enough uh, silicon grease on it. And therefore, the O-rings might get damaged. This is one of the three main um, issues about the greasing. Okay? So here you can see... This is, this is a Sterilite DXM, which I have reviewed. It has two great O-rings, but they are very dry. And they actually come like this when the torch is new. So what do I recommend you to do in this case? The O-rings are clean, there is no sand, there is no debris on it. What you need to do in this case is very simple. You're going to take your silicon grease. You're going to apply a little bit onto your finger, like this. Only a little bit. Now I took a little more because it's, it's a brand new light. And what you're going to do, I'm just going to show you. What you're going to do, you just want to apply it a little bit everywhere around the orange like this. There you go. And then just even evenly try to distribute it on the orange, not on the light itself. And there you go. They're well greased now. now. Obviously, you can get it also under the orange and so on, but this is not really a matter as it will distribute itself. Now, just take the rest you have on your finger and just give it a turn or a twist in the tail to get the rest of it. Now, if you close the light, you're going to feel right away that there is much less resistance and the O-rings will hold much longer and like this you are extending their lifetime. Then we come to the second issue, which I'm not, I'm not going to be able to show right now, but this is a big issue which many people they, they think they are protecting their light or they are doing a great maintenance, but it's really the opposite of it. And what is it? I don't have it right now, but it's when they over-grease it. And what does this mean? They think after every dive they need to put some grease on it. And it starts to ac accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. And one day there is so much grease. So imagine here you can see the nice three O-rings. There is so much grease over the o-rings that the water can actually flow in between the grease and the o-rings and can get into the light. This is a big issue. What do I recommend to you? What do I recommend to you? If you if you seem to have some dirt or so onto the flashlight, just take a simple piece of paper. It could even be a toilet paper. Take it like this, clean them off. Very simple and easy like this. And you will see the debris coming off. And you can, you can just clean them around a little bit uh, until you see that there is no more dirt on the o-rings. And then you can just apply a little bit again and it's done. And here with we come to the third and worst issue, which is the dirt on the o-rings. If you have sand from a dive, if you have any kind of, um, any kind of debris which can, which can not only damage your o-ring, but it, it, it there might be water going into the torch because of this of this dirt we could say so exactly the same thing clean them off all the way and in case you see there is dirt in between the o-rings and the flashlight you in the worst case you could even take it off which i'm going to show you now and this is also valid if the o-rings are getting old or they are getting kind of grumpy or you feel that they are getting simply old and they are not doing their job very well and you want to exchange them with the included exchange o-rings this is what you have to do so i'm going to use my professional tool here i call it professional because it works very well for me and what you got to do is so the way this works is actually very simple you have to get 
under the o-ring, but you can't stick the the tip in, otherwise you will damage the o-ring. If it's an old o-ring, it it doesn't matter. But do you can you see what I'm doing? I'm just going like this from the side, very simply, and the o-ring will come up. Do you see this? The tip will dive in, and it's under the o-ring like this. And then I just take it like this, and moving backwards, so I, I don't damage it. I just go under the o-ring, and there we go. Now I can maybe give go go around, and I can take it off like this, and there goes the o-ring. Okay. This is so simple to do, but it takes some, some practice and experience. And I really recommend you the first time, maybe even grease them a little bit so it goes easier. And be very careful if you use something sharp or pointy. Don't use a scissor or something like this. It's totally stupid. You're going to damage the o-ring, 100% sure. So here's the o-ring taken off. It's not damaged. This is actually a new one, so I'm going to put the same one on again. But now you could ex exchange it with the exchange o-rings with the brand new exchange o-rings or in the case you are cleaning it just take your paper towel on a, on, a, on, a, on a clean place and you can clean it off all the way around it like this until all the debris is off if the o-ring is still good you're gonna take a little bit of grease like I'm doing now actually took a little bit too much so you can put back a little bit and you're gonna grease it again like this okay just make sure it's nicely greased so it will fluff around or it will move around wherever it needs to go. And the way what you want to do now, and this is always a little painful if it's the first time for you, but there is no issue on pulling it on like this. And once it's on, it's okay. And then you can simply with your hand pull it slowly down like this. Or you could use the tool from the beginning on. I used to use a tool, but now actually Sometimes I, I do it with the tool or with the hand. It depends on what you are doing. And there you go. It's on again. You can check like this if it's on. And you can do the same thing for a tree if needed. Always make sure and think before you take the o-ring off. Do you need to do this? Because this is what damages the o-rings most. Taking it off and on. Especially if you don't have much experience with it. Okay. Now in this case. Let's imagine we, we have. Um, we have put the new o-rings on or we have just cleaned them if it was a case of cleaning you also might have debris in here so you're just going to take the towel or the paper towel and you're just going to give it a nice clean and you're going to see old grease coming out which might even be colored already so you're just going to clean it out and done it is now then you're going to take this one you can see it's nicely greased. Now, depending on the light you're using, if it goes very difficult, what you could do is you're just going to apply a little bit of grease like this onto the thread, like this, a little bit onto the thread. And this, once you screw it up and or on and off, it will distribute itself and it will make the whole screwing process a little easier as there is less resistance. And what you could also do, and this is also a little bit of important because of the o-rings, on the part where the o-ring sits on, you're just going to take a little bit of grease and you're going to place it in there, like this, in order that the grease is not only on the o-rings, but also on the counter part. Now, there we go. Clean off your fingers and, you can, and you're good to go to screw it in again. And it goes very easily. Okay? There we go. And your maintenance is done. Another thing is, and in this case it's quite important if you have camera housings, especially the GoPro housings, and I can't stop saying this times enough, for people when I see people with GoPros, especially with GoPros, and the people just don't care about the o-ring or they don't know they should do anything or so and they go diving with it, and the whole o-ring, and this is, this is not a GoPro, it's an Action Pro X7, but they have this big o-ring, and it's always full of dirt and they go diving with this thing to 30 meters and I always say come on be, be careful with this it's it's, uh, it's it's an expensive housing and it's not about being expensive well it's their money but there is a high risk of water getting in and once there is water in there is not much to do okay so we're gonna take a look at this one
and this also works for digital cameras or GoPros. The first thing you should do is always take a look at the o-ring if you see any big scratches or cuts or so and this is an urgent sign you have to exchange it. This one for example looks quite good, this already has two or three years and it looks quite good. Now, but this is kind of dirty, I haven't cleaned this for a few dives and I want to clean it now. If there is only a bit of surface dirt on it, you could clean it off again with the paper towel. So let's do this right now. You could do it with the paper towel. There we go. And if, you, if, if it seems to be good to you, if it seems nice and clean, you can keep it li like it is. Or then you could take it off. Therefore you could use a tool or this o-ring remover if you have a big digital camera but in this case and in the case of the GoPros many times it's much easier if you just take the fingers like this and it, it also works on certain flashlights or certain dive lights if you take the fingers like this and you push them both to one side you will see the o-ring is extending there you can put your finger in and you can pull it off this is the best way there is no cutting um, danger or so on and the o-ring comes off with no sharp tools okay then what you have to what you have to do is you're gonna take the o-ring the same way as you did with others just gonna take some fresh paper towel and you're gonna clean it off okay so just make sure there is no dirt on it and clean it off this is a maintenance you should not do after every dive but you could say after every five to six seven eight dives depending on where you dive depending on how clean it is this is, has to be your decision but you should not do it too often, otherwise also the o-ring might get damaged if you put it on every day, let's say, okay? Then, I'm just gonna place it here where it's clean. You're gonna take a look at the case and you're gonna see probably dirt in there and you can just clean the groove out with the paper towel. Then, what is also important, is the counter side of the o-ring. There's also always dirt on it from the o-ring itself and you're just gonna give it a nice clean and this is basically the case clean and ready to be placed in again. Now the same thing you have to do in case you are exchanging the original o-ring. As I said this one looks good only has some edges from from the case itself what you have to do now is grease it same as on the flashlight. And now you could place it in right away or you could put a little bit of grease but this is only a little bit of grease not too much into the groove itself but in my case i'm not going to do this because too much grease will hold on a lot of sediments sand or so on and i don't want this okay now i'm just going to place it in again i'm going to try to align the edges i think it was in like this yes no, yes, it wasn't like this, and I'm just gonna place it back into the groove, and there we go. The o ring is placed in. Now a small, a small issue or a small thing I want. Now a small thing I want to show you here is that basically, if you if you just took the o ring off, in case you have an o ring and not this um, this pressure pressure seal, which you just kind of with the pressure it seals off. If you have this real o rings. What you have to be careful now, and I want to show you this on mine, if I, if I put it in now, you're going to see the o-ring popping out on the side. There you go. You see this? And this is an issue only the first time. So once you get it in, you're, you don't have this issue anymore, as it's pressed into the groove quite well. So here we go. Just going to make sure it's going in. And there we go. It's not too difficult. And it's back together. Now... I recommend you to keep it closed for a couple of hours as long as you don't need it and the o-ring will and, and after that time the o-ring will be back in its usual position as it should be okay so this is what I have to say this is the maintenance you should do and should not do especially to not uh, get the o-rings damaged but it's what's very important to use in your case if you're trying to do this at home and you're not a professional diver we could say do not use any kind of lubrificant don't use olive oil for example don't use 
you're not going to use vinegar, obviously, but this kind of uh, not synthetic um, greases, they, might, they may contain kinds of acid and other stuff which is not good for the o-rings and they might deteriorate your o-ring instead of doing good. So use silicon based um, grease and they will work fine for you, the o-ring won't get damaged. So thank you very much for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you next time.